Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for pressing play. My name is Justin, and today we're going to be discussing some C8 Corvette information, starting with the E-Ray getting banned from some racetracks. The Z06 versus the GT3, the outcome might not be what you think, and the fact that there have been some new Z06 allocations that just went out this past Thursday, and we have a really clear picture of how many cars have been built, how many have been convertible, how many have been coupe and more. Let's talk about it. All right, guys. So we are here to discuss some C8 Corvette information today. A bunch of new news has come out and I wanted to get it out to you guys as soon as possible. So let's start off with the hottest topic today. And that is that the E-Ray is facing some banning across the board at certain racetracks because of the fact that it is battery powered to some degree. Now, obviously you guys know by now the E-Ray is a hybrid setup, so it does still have have your typical gas powered 6.2 liter engine in the rear, but it also has that hybrid motor up on the front that's also got a battery running down the center tunnel. Some racetracks apparently don't like this design very much. So the drive just announced today that there are some racetracks that are banning this car because of its setup, specifically the National Club Competition. I wanted to really quick mention ProClip as the sponsor of today's video. Whether you have a C6, a C7, or or a C8 Corvette, ProClip makes the mount that you're gonna want for your car. It's an extremely easy to install system that does not require any kind of permanent modification, tape, or screws. It clips in and it can be removed as easily as it is installed. Like I said, it is a two-part system, meaning that it will have just the arm for the C8 Corvette that wraps around the back of the infotainment system, and then you will choose whichever mount best fits your phone to go on the front. The best part, you can actually save 10% just by using the code HPO10 and following the link in the description down below. So just posted today by the drive, like I said, 2024 Chevy Corvette E-Ray is officially banned from national club competition. Their article goes on to say that the quickest Corvette ever made won't be if it's not allowed anywhere near a track. The Chevy Corvette has always been America's sports car for its athleticism on the road and proven record on the track. The newest iteration might not have the same welcome, however. The new 2024 Chevy Corvette E-Ray is officially banned from competing at events sanctioned by the National Council of Corvette Clubs and will be required to park at least 30 feet away from other cars and buildings if driven to an event, according to the association's rules. That's because unlike any other Corvette before it, the E-Ray has that 1.9 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that organizers and likely insurers may have deemed too risky to have on the track and near anything else. We reached out to the NCCC and to Chevy to comment, but haven't heard back. We'll update this story if we do. The rule appears to have been added in November of 2022 after the car was largely confirmed, but before its actual debut. The rule 1.8.1 Item 14 is clear. Electric vehicles slash hybrids using lithium type battery packs are prohibited in competitive events. If driven to NCCC events, they should be parked 30 feet minimum from structures or other vehicles. The NCCC oversees hundreds of autocross, low and high speed events and time trials nationwide. Now this is definitely interesting guys. I'm sure a lot of you out there are interested in the E-Ray. We've covered this in the past on my channel. I love what the E-Ray represents but I'm more of a Z06 guy. Those of you out there looking forward to the E-Ray, this is kind of a concern for me because in a time where there is definitely being a big push for electric vehicles or at least a hybrid setup of some kind, this is concerning. I would imagine that this will eventually get overturned in some degree, but at the same time, there's a reason that this rule exists and it is concerning to me. Lithium ion batteries do kind of have their temperamental states and can potentially catch fire and burn pretty hot, completely destroy a car, and that's not great to have on a racetrack. If you guys are familiar with it, not too long ago, the E-Ray was actually photographed catching fire and burning up before we knew for sure that it was an E-Ray. A lot of people said that that particular fire was not caused by the battery pack, but actually from an oil leak in the rear of the actual gasoline powered engine portion of the car. But nonetheless, once that fire hit the front where the battery was located, an additional explosion happened. So it is something to watch out for on racetracks. How this story will end up, we'll just have to wait and see guys. But there you have it. 
as of now, the E-Ray is officially banned from certain racetracks and certain race competitions. Moving on though, guys, we got some good news for the C8 Corvette Z06. Allocations just came out this past Thursday, which just so happens to be yesterday. And it is exciting because we are finally starting to hit some decent numbers with the Z06. I know a lot of you out there are disenchanted with the Z06 because of how hard they are to get, how much the dealers are charging over MSRP and gouging all over the price. I understand. I get it. Trust me. I am personally affected by it. But at the same time, I'm always excited to see the Z06 moving forward. And that's what we get to see today. So more allocations went out yesterday, like I said, and we have some official numbers. So we now know exactly how many Z06s have been built, how many of them have been convertibles, how many of them have been coupes. And we can break that down even further as to how many were coupes for the 70th anniversary edition and how many were convertibles for the 70th anniversary edition. So let's talk about the numbers here. But before we do, one specific part of this article that really stands out to me is from over at the CorvetteBlogger.com. They started off their article by saying, despite dealers only being able to submit dealer stock orders for the 23Z06, we were happy to report that Chevrolet did another round of 23Z06 allocations on Thursday to select dealers. There was even one dealer that they spoke to and he was super excited to have finally received his first Z07 allocation. So even though the Z07 is on constraint, they are still trickling in those allocations. So any of you guys out there waiting for a Z07 spot, you might be in luck. The article continues on to say, production of the Z06 has been on fire this week as well. And I'm thinking this is the best week for Z06 production we've had since they started down the line last fall. Just this week, Monday through Thursday, the plant has completed 200 128 new Z06s, and we're finally seeing a bunch more of those being the 70th anniversary models. Currently, we are counting 1,659 regular Z06s and 284 70th anniversary models for a total of 1,943. Based on Friday and Monday's production totals, we should surpass 2,000 Z06s by early next week, which is absolutely fantastic. If they had actually shut down production at the beginning of April like they originally intended to for the model year 2023, we would have definitely been locked in around 1,500 of these cars. For regular Z06 production, the Z06 coupes are at 49% versus 51% of the convertible models, while the disparity is even greater for the 70th anniversary models. That breakdown is 37% coupe versus 63% convertible. We are guessing that there would be more Z06 coupes than convertibles for the regular Z06 models if the Z07 package was more readily available for the regular models. For the 70th anniversary package, people just prefer the convertible driving experience more. What do you guys think? Would you prefer the convertible or the coupe? I'm just curious because that seems to be a pretty large gap between the two there. So 37% coupe and 60 3% convertible. More than half of you guys are choosing convertible. So I'm curious, let me know in the comment section down below, are you taking a coupe or a convertible? And then lastly, guys, we have some Z06 versus the new Porsche GT3 information here from the guys over at the Savage Geese YouTube channel. This was a really enjoyable video to watch because they put it together in a really awesome way where it was strictly facts. There are no opinions here. Everything was done as factual as possible. And I'll spoil it a little bit for you. The Z06 barely edges out the GT3, which is a huge accomplishment for the Z06. As you guys know, Porsches in general are typically just track monsters and the Z06 is able to edge out the brand new GT3. That is gigantic. That is a huge win win for Chevy. There is a lot of information to cover in that video. Obviously, I'm not going to get into all of it, but one comment posted over at the midenginecorvetteforum.com was that the video is a deep dive on both cars. Not as deep as our original videos on either vehicle, but it focuses both on track and street dynamics where we try to paint the pros and cons of each car. The main talking point of the video is, of course, the track test. Both cars are supported by OEMs, ran at the same time with the same driver, and both were on Cup 2R tires. The Z06 was marginally faster, less than a tenth of a second. The primary issue with the Z06 was that it was slower in every sweeper and it couldn't break as deep. The braking was a mix of the weight, extra speed the Z06 had to bleed off, 
and the brake by wire pedal offers little feedback when going into the tents. The Z06 made up its time in every single straightaway. The data we gathered shows that on a bigger track, the Z06 would pull a larger lead, make the track any tighter. However, the GT3 has a good shot of being faster. The course chosen for this test was Autobahn South and Britt Casey, an IMSA driver, was the one to set the laps. So basically guys, the GT3 handles a little bit better in the corners because of the fact, number one, it's lighter weight and it's a Porsche. I mean, Porsches just have absolutely crazy handling abilities, but the fact that the Z06 was able to keep up and in this case actually win, even though it was only by a 10th of a second is pretty substantial. So not that I needed to keep telling you this stuff guys, because the Z06 is an absolutely phenomenal car and it continues to prove that fact every single time we see something like this come out. If you guys are lucky enough to have an allocation or even own one of these cars, congratulations to you because you guys have one heck of a freaking vehicle. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. So if you liked what you saw, please smash that thumbs up button. Let me know you're liking the content so we can keep bringing this kind of new stuff to you. It helps break the YouTube algorithm and it really helps get this video out to as many other Corvette enthusiasts as possible. If you guys have any questions about the content, please leave them in the comment section down below and I will make sure you get an answer. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm going to have loads of content like this coming. You're not going to want to miss. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next upload.